Uh, hello everyone, good morning. Uh, this is uh, Reverend Akai once again. And um, this morning I came to pray and I did not plan to, to, to record any video, but I feel the need to do that. We are praying for the nation of Namibia today. We want to thank God for the president. He asked the nation to pray and that is exactly what we are doing. But when I came to pray, the Lord began to lay a message of repentance uh, in my heart for the church. He said the church needs to awake some of the things that happen. Uh, the, 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 we have scriptural connotation and interpretation to some of the things that we go through. And the first thing that came to me today is Ephesians chapter 5, verse 14, where he says, Awake, O you sleeper. Arise from your slumber, and Christ will shine upon you. And this scripture is speaking to the church. He says the church needs to awake. It means that there is a time to arise. There are things that are not meant to find us and catch us unawares. You know, and we want to thank God because, yes, the Lord has used quite a number of people to alert. The watchmen cannot afford to sleep on duty. We cannot afford to sleep on duty. When you see fear comes to the church because of things, it's because the church did not anticipate and the church did not, uh, was not prepared. We want to thank God for the, some of the people that have been sensitive enough to pick this and to share with the people. And so we pray that God will shine his light upon his church, that the church will awaken. And that is one of the things we need to pray to repent about because we are not supposed to be asleep in the first place. We are not supposed to be asleep. The, the Bible says, Revelation, uh, I would like to quickly read Revelation chapter 2, that uh, he spoke, uh, the, the Lord Jesus spoke to, to the Laodicean church, to the Ephesian church, sorry, uh, Ephesian, uh, Revelation chapter 2, uh, from verse 2 he says, I know your deeds, your toil, and your patient, patient endurance. And that you cannot tolerate those who are evil and have tested and critically appraised those who call themselves apostles uh, and in fact are not and have found them to be liars and impostors. Verse 3, and I know that you who believe are enduring patiently and are bearing up for my name's sake and that you have not grown weary of being faithful to the truth. But... I have this charge against you that you have left your first love. You have lost the depth of love that you once had for me. Verse 5. So remember the height from which you have fallen and repent. Change your inner self, your old way of thinking, your sinful behavior. Seek God's will and do the works you did at first when you first knew me. Otherwise, I will visit you and remove your lampstand unless you repent. Can you see that the Lord is calling us back to the place of our first love? And the Lord is laying in my heart that one of the biggest problems of the church, the sin of the church this day, is the sin of presumption. We presume a lot about our relationship with God. We, we are presumptuous about it. Even when there is no fruit entirely in our lives, we still are so calm and relaxed and joyful and cheerful and carefree without any any remorse now the scripture tells us that this church was actually vibrant when you look at the church everything appears to be well which is the church we are in today everything seems well the music is good the worship is powerful the word is very powerful everything seemed to be good but he said you have left your first love we emphasize a lot, which is very true, on how much he loved us, what he did for us, how he died for us, how he gave everything for us, how he gave us his righteousness, how he gave us everything to enjoy, that, and, and, things, and, and he has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in high places. We talk about these things, but we never talk about our love and dedication to him our love and dedication to him in this scripture he's calling us back to the place of loving him calling us back to a place of serving him calling us back to a place where we remember that he has loved us but we love him we need to love him and there's evidence of that love is seen in a way we we, we nurture our our relationship with him and this is what the lord is saying that the church has fallen from the height 
the height where we depended on him to a height to a place where we now are presumptuous about his love and blessing the blessing of god is meant to to, to take us to a place of perpetual hunger for him it's meant to take us to a place of complete reliance on him to take us to a place of a perfect dependence and reliance when the bible talks about be perfect it's not talking about being perfect in all that we do but in our dependence on him but we are presumptuous and the lord is saying repent go back to the first place we are not preaching legalism when we talk about fruit God expects fruit. Jesus said, you did not call me. I called you and I called you for the purpose of fruit bearing. The moon can only reflect the light that comes from the sun. And the light is always shining on us. Jesus is always shining. But there are things that are blocking the shining. There are things that are blocking our light from shining. And we need to deal with those. So it does not mean that we don't have light. It means that we are not letting it shine. The Bible says, Matthew 5, 16, let your light so shine. Allow it to shine. Is it shining? And this is where God is calling us back to. That we must go back to a place where we shine his light. We must go back to a place where we bear fruit. We must go back to a place where the evidence of who we are is seen by the world. Let the world see. The Bible says that they may see your light and glorify the Father. And glorify the Father. Our lives must shine. Church, awake from our sleep. Awake from our slumber. And that is why when you go to 2 Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, it says, If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray, Let's not be presumptuous. Let's humble ourselves, identify with the sin of the world. And you see the preceding verse, the verse 13 of that says, if, ah, if my people sin, if they I send pestilence. It talks about that. Let me quickly read that scripture. You know, uh, uh, verse, verse, verse uh, 13, it says, in 2 Chronicles 7, verse 13, it says, If I shut up the heavens so that no rain falls, or if I command locusts to devour the land, or if I speak, send pestilence and plague among my people and my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek and crave and require as a necessity my face and turn from their wicked ways then i will hear them from heaven and forgive their sin and then i will heal their land church god is calling us to a place of repentance because he wants to heal the land he wants to heal the land. Let's come off our high horse. Let's humble ourselves and seek his face and cry as intercessors. Stand in the gap for our nations and let God arise and his enemies scatter. God bless you.